If there's anything necessary for a movie, if there's anything more important than the movie, it's the film's trailer. You must, I repeat, must have a trailer. And it's gotta be a great movie trailer. Not an idling collection of video clips spliced with some vague text. My friend is really fond of saying, it's all about the trailer. It is, because it's not just a matter of having someone that will convince your target audience out there to see your movie. It's more a matter of convincing the most important person involved with a movie's success, the buyer. The buyer is someone who can make things happen for you. Someone within the system, an agent, a producer, an executive, someone versed in the ways of marketing, who has the knowledge of marketing and can recognize a fellow traveler. Because while you may have trouble digesting the idea that a movie is all about its, all about its marketing, this someone or group of someones lives and dies by that understanding. In fact, they see it more clearly than any of the filmmakers. Money is not made by people watching the movie, it's made by people paying to see the movie. A trailer is what spurs that, it is the hook, the line. This someone, this important person who will pay you a lot of money for your movie or broker a sale for a lot of money will constantly, and I mean constantly, be in the need for and on the lookout for something tangible that has all the elements in place and ready for an easy sale. It is a professionally made trailer that attracts someone who can open doors for you. It's a professionally made trailer that can help you, in many ways, penetrate that very 90% of media we were talking about. If you make the trailer right and you have a semi-decent movie and a buyer actually sees that trailer, they will reach out to you, ask to see the movie, offer you money, and invite you in, which is how someone makes it in the world of professional movie making. They are invited in. The best way to conjure up this invite is with a professionally made trailer. Of course, a professionally made trailer is the one thing starting filmmakers never ever get right. A typical trailer from a first time filmmaker armed with a film is usually patterned after a trailer for a Wes Anderson or Stanley Kubrick film. Just some random shots of people looking vague and dumb and haphazardly stitched together over esoteric music, ironic, opaque, and stupid. You've seen that kind of trailer before. It's replete with art type of movies, which is chiefly why art movies seldom make any money. The director was given control of the advertising, either through his professional power or by default, i.e. Uh, low budget. And the result is a trailer that turns off all but the most diehard moviegoers. Directors flock to this kind of trailer design because it's one, a design used by a director they admire, and two, because it's really, really freaking easy. <laughs> when you watch a trailer for a professional movie, a Hollywood movie, a real movie, one with lots of money behind it, you'll notice that the edits of the trailer are tight, quick, and fast. The music is on point, the titles are crisp and pertinent, the entire video is no longer than two minutes and 30 seconds. More importantly, the trailer imparts valuable, intriguing information in an extremely sufficient, structured way. Because not only does a trailer have to raise interest, but it has to pique curiosity. This creates a need for the two-handed trick of providing a lot of information while at the same time creating a little bit of mystery. It's a common complaint with movie trailers that they give too much away. Robert Zemeckis, director of Back to the Future, Cast Away, and What Lies Beneath, however, puts it well. The reason McDonald's is a tremendous success is that you don't have any surprises. You know exactly what it is going to taste like. Everybody knows the menu. People want to know what they are getting into. So how do you turn the trick? How do you let people know what they're getting into, all the while conjuring up a mystery and, more importantly, a demand to see the movie. Furthermore, how do you go about actually crafting these ideas into a finely tuned, tightly wound, Hollywood-like movie trailer? For one, you could get in touch with me. I've been editing trailers for almost 20 years and know how to structure them, create the assets, the edits, the sound design, and the music that makes up a professional trailer for a reasonable fee. But if you want it if you want a chance at going at it alone, you perform the, this exercise. The first thing you do is go and find the trailers to at least five of the movies that are like yours. The more recent, the better. 
because while the principles are the same, you want to get current with what's selling now or very recently. Get a huge stack of three by five note cards. Yeah, the note cards again. Note each shot, image, and the trailer. Yes, that's each shot. Say you're studying the resident, uh, the trailer for Resident Evil, uh, for a Resident Evil movie. If there's a shot of Milyovich as Alice walking at the camera, gun at the ready, you note Alice walks at the camera, gun at the ready. Then you count how many frames that shot lasts for, not seconds, because seconds are too large of a measure of a trailer shot duration. It must be measured in frames. By clicking through frame by frame counting, it's getting a sense of how many frames a typical trailer shot lasts that will lead you to crafting a professional and therefore precise trailer. I can't stress how important this is, how important this precision is. Go through the entire trailer, noting and describing each shot. Yes, this is a lot of work because trailer making, while only ultimately a two and a half minute video, is one of the hardest jobs in show business. Its brevity is what makes it so difficult. When you're done going through all the shots, go back to the beginning. It's time to write down each line spoken or heard by the viewer on its own note card. That means when Alice's voice and Resident Evil voice uh, booms out the soundtrack, my name is Alice. You write that down on a separate note card. You mark whether it's only heard on the audio or whether it's also shown being spoken by the character on screen. You do this for each line that is spoken. Again, a tremendous amount of work, and it is. But doing this will show you a pattern. A trailer is not crafted out of shots and music, as is often the practice of filmmakers making their first trailers, but rather a professional trailer and therefore uh, motivated, is crafted and therefore motivated by the lines of dialogue, because it's in the dialogue where you'll find the most clarified demonstration of the film's plot. And it's within curating the plot points of the film where you will be allowed, where you will allow the audience to know what they're getting into, while at the same time uh, retaining a little mystery. Knowing this cuts through a lot of blind alleys, like trying to craft a, a message through visuals. In trailer editing, indeed any kind of commercial editing, it's the audio that motivates the visuals. You begin to see this as you study and compile all the other trailers for the movies that are like yours. It'll look like this. Card one, Alice. I've been fighting my whole life. Card two, Alice. I've lost all my friends. Card three, Alice. I've lost all my loved ones. Card four, Alice. I've, I have only my enemies. Card five, Alice. My name is Alice. You'll have all of these on separate note cards, and you'll notice a pattern, and immediately you begin to see the actual progression of the trailer. Alice. I've been fighting my whole life. Bam, bam, bam. Shots of Alice punching a zombie. Alice. I've lost all my friends. Bam, bam, bam. Shots of Alice's friends screaming, sliding into a pit of zombies. Alice. I've lost all my loved ones. Bam, bam, bam. Shots of some guy getting blown up. Alice. I now only have my enemies. Boom. You might hear that power down sound, a shot of Alice confronting some suited up boss of the Umbrella Corporation. After you compile all of these note cards, you then go through the audio portions, the snippets of dialogue, and examine how they are stacked, so to speak. You note which snippets of dialogue were chosen and in what order they were placed to create the intellectual effect, the trailer, uh, the mental space where the trailer wants, the, uh, wants to position the viewer, and how that's created. It's in the film's dialogue that a trailer can truly be crafted in a professional manner. So, knowing that, you go through your own film. You listen for, not look for, trailer-worthy dialogue. What's trailer-worthy? Anything that pertains to the prior status of the story's world. That would be something like a character in the movie saying, mm, the mainland has been under attack for three months. Or, our supplies are dwindling. Or, the soldiers are growing restless. In other words, exposition, facts that are stated about the world of the movie. Collect those, write them down on a note card, then find snippets of dialogue that seem to pertain to the film's inciting incident. Card one, we're under attack. Card two, they've breached the perimeter. It's here where you reveal the plot points without revealing how they will unfold because it's in revealing plot points, not concealing them, that creates the intrigue. The surprise isn't in that something in a movie will happen, it's in how it will happen. 
This is the case with Christopher Nolan's uh, film Dunkirk. You know what's going to happen. History has already so-called spoiled the film for you. In fact, the trailer for that movie begins with a spoiler. What has happened is a colossal military disaster. It's those very words that set up the main thrust of Dunkirk. It's not how the event will turn out, it's how the event will unfold. So as you study your trailers, search for dialogue that seems to support any means of the character taking action to close the gap opened by the film's inciting incident. This will be found in the character talking about how they'll go about restoring the balance of their world. In the Dunkirk trailer, it's more of the one character reading the Churchill speech. We shall never surrender. Because that's what the main note of the movie is, the main action. It is about men fighting to get off a beach. It says this movie is about soldiers fighting to survive. Then you look for di dialogue that supports this. In the Dunkirk trailer, there's a line where the one soldier shouts, this ship's about to leave. Then when you find something like that line, you go in the other direction and hunt down any dialogue that seems to oppose that particular effort of the character. In the Dunkirk trailer, no sooner does the one soldier announce the ship's about to leave, someone else screams, torpedo, and kaboom. Tit for tat, which is what makes for a dynamic, dramatic trailer. Continuing with the Dunkirk trailer, quote, they need to send more ships. Every hour, the enemy pushes closer. The answer to this? They've activated the civilian boats. That's an action taken by the good guys. But then, some words in opposition to that piece of action. Civilians, we need destroyers. In other words, the action they plan to take may or may not work out. Th that is how, uh, th that is the drama. How will they get off the beach? Build up a goodly amount of these lines uh, from your movie that seem to contradict one another. Then using the note cards, sort everything out until you see the trailer develop before you. Lay the cards out. What line best defines the big problem? What line escalates that conflict? What lines oppose that escalation? You will very clearly see the actual structure of your movie trailer. From that, all of the titles, the sound effect, hits, and music will all fall in line because it's in between the opposing lines of dialogue where you intersperse the sound effects, the transitioning sound, the stingers, the titles that may juxtapose, that may further clarify the ideas presented. Then, finally, beneath it all, you place the music. Amazingly enough, you don't even really need an actual song. A trailer's construction beyond the structure of the lines is determined by meter and time. Tap, 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 the beat, the rhythm, tempo. From the Resident Evil trailer, Ah, Alice, you think you can defeat the Umbrella Corporation. Boom, boom. Alice, I know I can defeat the Umbrella Corporation. In other words, you make your own song out of the sound impacts, the sound hits, the boom, boom, that cranks in after every line. From there, you massage your edits to an invisible rhythm, or if you prefer, put in what's called a click track. A click track is what musicians use to keep time and rhythm. It's set at a certain beats per minute, or BPM, which sets the tempo. A trailer's tempo is always found in the structure of these lines. If you follow this advice, and if you really treat the making of the trailer as serious business, I guarantee you will create a piece of marketing that will be sure to attract not only a buyer for your product, but thousands of curious moviegoers.